In my search for more obscure animated films to rewatch and make a video about, I had a difficult time remembering what else I might have seen as a kid that isn't very well known. But if I automatically find one by googling obscure animated film, there's a good chance that these movies aren't as rare as I would like them to be. However, I did come across a film that isn't obscure in its country of origin and one that I haven't seen before, but it did catch my attention. This film is called Technotize, Edit and I. Okay, so I don't remember how exactly, but I found a video on YouTube that turned out to be the entire film. Interested in learning more about it, I googled it and found out that it was a Serbian film written and directed by a comic book illustrator named Alexa Gajic. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name. Alexa Gajic. Close enough. The movie is a sci-fi film that follows the story of a young female student named Edit, who, after failing a few exams, gets an illegal memory chip implanted in her to help her cheat. But then, strange things begin to happen. Okay, that's as vague as one can be. What truly caught my interest though is some of the trivia on IMDb. According to the info on the site, the production took place in a small apartment and was made by 10 to 15 people, taking about 5 years to finish. This really made me want to watch it. But I didn't just want to watch the unofficial low quality upload on YouTube. This seemed like a film worth supporting financially, especially if it would help the filmmakers behind it. Sad news is that even though the film is available on Amazon and some websites where you can watch it for free with ads, it's only available for people in the United States. I don't have a VPN, and unless I get sponsored by one, which isn't gonna be anytime soon, I won't be able to afford one at the moment either, mostly because I live in Lebanon and my country's currency value is going to shit. So streaming won't work, but maybe getting a DVD would. So I found out that Amazon sold copies of the DVD between 10 to 20 dollars, but again they were only available in the US and shipping them to Lebanon cost about 49 dollars. That's without mentioning whatever tax I get on top of that. At first I tried to see if any of my family members or friends in the states were coming back to visit and they can get the DVD with them, but none of them were, at least not anytime soon, so that option was gone. So I ended up trying to search for alternative ways to watch the film but didn't know where exactly to look. That's when I stumbled upon the director's contact info. So I took a chance and sent him an email directly, hoping that he would respond. And lucky for me, he did. For privacy reasons I won't be showing the email's content, but here's the gist of our exchange. Hey, I came across your film and was really interested in watching it, but I'm in Lebanon and I can't stream it here and the cost of buying a DVD is way too high. Any idea where else I can watch it? Hey, thanks for your interest. I sadly don't really know how to help you though. Other options are Blu-rays that are only available in Great Britain and Germany, and I don't have any copies left. Ah damn, well someone actually posted the film on YouTube, which is how I found it. But it's low quality and I actually want to pay for it, you know, help support the artist and all. Oh, I don't really make money from it. The rights are with the distribution company, so they get whatever profits the film is currently making. Oh. Well... You know what? My sister actually lives in Germany, so I think I got it covered. Ah, oh, she'll send you a copy? Yeah. Sure. Wait. Hey man, if I'm fetish on a VPN, let to put the film in Chrome extension. It's called Set Up VPN. You can put the film on it. Let me check. Oh shit! <laughs> it actually works! Now I don't have to worry about giving my laptop aids for using some shady ass website. According to my friend, Setup VPN doesn't work on Amazon Prime, and I tried using it on Netflix, but with no success. But it did end up working on the website Plex.tv, which is where I saw the film. Now I'm about to recap the plot while keeping spoilers to a minimum. Though I'll get into some specific plot points, I will refrain from spoiling the ending and other major moments. We follow the main character, Edit. She's a psychology and communications major who's been failing at her exams. In order to pass the next one, she meets up with a drug dealer friend of hers who injects her with a chip that enhances a person's ability to memorize things. We learn that Edit interns at a research facility where she takes care of an autistic man named Abel. Edit presumed that Abel is unable to talk, but she is surprised when he suddenly not only speaks, but also appears to predict the future. 
Arid goes to the head professor of the facility to ask him about Abel, and he reveals that he doesn't really have autism, but was instead a mathematician who had discovered a formula that explains the secrets of the universe. Understanding the formula made him develop autistic-like behavior, it even gave him the ability to calculate how certain events would play out. The professor explains that when they pass the formula through a powerful computer to calculate it and understand how it works, the machine would become self-aware, or alive, and immediately shut down. He later shows Edit the formula not knowing that she has the memory chip in her, which processes the equation and slowly starts to develop a consciousness of its own. The chip starts to take form as an image of a white-haired man inside Edit's head. At first, she thinks she's either hallucinating or being haunted, but she later begins to get to know this AI figure who she names Eddie. However, people from the facility learn about Eddie's existence and want to take him out of Edit's body, a process that might end up killing her. So now she's on the run with the help of her friends, and that's as much as I'm about to spoil. Throughout the story, we come across a lot of characters, including Edit's boyfriend and some of her friends, as well as her calm grandfather and her not-so-calm mother, the professor, Abel, the facility's director, and even some mechanical stuffed animal-type droids that exist in this universe. Of course, Edit and Eddie have the biggest focus in the film. Some parts of the relationship are pretty weird, though. For example, the reason Edit sees Eddie as the male figure he is is because she had a suppressed memory when she was a young kid with another male child, where they had a you show me your wee wee and I'll show you mine type of encounter. And because Edit is a psychology major and Eddie knows everything she does, he managed to make that connection. There are a lot of things that I can't properly critique in this film due to the possibility of it being lost in translation. For example, there are two moments I didn't fully understand. One where Edit's grandfather talks to her boyfriend about the origins of a chair he has in his office, and in that story he says he took it from the parliament during the overthrowing of then-president Slobodan Milosevic. Slobodan Milosevic. Close enough. It's a real-life event that happened in Yugoslavia in the year 2000. But in the story, the grandfather explains that he saw the president with an alien being popping out of his head. And I really didn't get what was the purpose of that scene. Is it connected to the rest of the film's themes? I have no idea. Another weird moment is when Edit and Eddie, um, fuck. FUCK! Eddie explains to her that he can make her feel as if she's actually being touched, so they end up banging. I'm guessing this is to build the relationship, or it's probably just the filmmakers being horny. Okay, note to anybody that's in a creative field, masturbate before you work on a project. Post not clarity is great for filmmaking, and you can quote me on that. Despite that, Eddie was an interesting character that reinforced some of the themes of the film, such as the question of what does it mean to be alive. A common theme in a lot of sci-fi films, yes, but he does talk about how he's not alive out of his own free will, and well, neither is anybody really, so that was noteworthy. Edit was a pretty good main character, and I enjoyed following her journey. Her boyfriend and her friends, as well as other side characters, were also fun, and I felt like their interactions with Edit helped define her character as well as help her develop. Before I get to my favorite part, I wanted to talk about the animation and discuss more about the making of. First things first, the animation is definitely limited by the tools the filmmakers have at their disposal as well as by the budget. Despite those limitations, it feels like it didn't stop them from trying to make the best film they can with the resources available to them. I contacted the director again to ask about the making of and how accurate the IMDb trivia were, and he was happy to reply to all my questions. According to him, the film cost less than 500,000 euros, and was made by him and a bunch of his friends gathered in his apartment in Belgrade. It's it took about two years for graphics and one year for sound and all of post-production. The budget wasn't enough for more work on the movie. He considers the film to be an auteur-type movie since he worked on multiple aspects of production as well as it being based on his own comic book that was part of his graduation project in Belgrade Academy. This film is considered to be Serbia's first animated film. It's entirely made with Serbian money and in the Serbian language, with the film having its story based around the country's domestic thematic. Apparently there was a sequel planned and 30 minutes of it were finished, but it ended up being cancelled. The director was nice enough to send me a digital copy of the film's art book and told me the making of footage was on YouTube, but those videos didn't have any subtitles, so I couldn't get what anybody was saying. The art book is in Serbian as well, but looking at the concept art and storyboards, you can clearly see all the work that this tiny team had to do. 
The animation is far from being on par with studios like Disney, and I think it's mainly due to the movement of the character models. I don't know much about the animation process, so I won't go into details, I'll just explain what I personally feel. The character animation reminds me of early Flash cartoons at times, and the mouth movement has this weird smoothness to it. Looking at the film and its art book, I believe the animation for the characters were mostly puppet animation, where they moved the digital drawings with keyframes. Though as a whole, the film utilizes multiple different types of animation. They use CG for buildings and specific objects, as well as hand-drawn, pencil, sketch-type animation for the grandfather's backstory. Yeah, some parts may look janky at times, but it's sometimes used to enhance comedic moments. I mean, just look at this scene out of context. Eh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> It is interesting to see that nowadays the technology available to the average person has improved so much that you can find a lot of cartoons on YouTube with far superior animation, but this came out in 2009 and it's feature length and not just a short. Also, the film feels like it has a clear vision all the way through, which leads me to my favorite part. So remember that thing I said earlier? post not clarity is great for filmmaking. No, not that. The, the part where I said, despite the limitations, it feels like they made the best film they possibly can. Alexa did a really good job directing the film. The pace and tone of the opening scene really pulls you in and builds atmosphere, especially with the use of the music. There are a lot of clever match cuts that work as a transition method from one scene to the next, which shows that a lot of thought was put into it. And the acting and dialogue didn't fall short either, as far as I can tell from a non-Serbian speaker. If I would change anything story-wise, I would have made Eddie's character more of a father figure to edit, since she's shown not to have a dad, and the image that Eddie appears in would be how she remembers her father before he died or something. But then they wouldn't bang! I don't know, I'm pretty sure there's an audience for that. Dude, what the fuck? Anyways, I would make the film less horny. So, final thoughts. This is a film that I would highly recommend, simply for the way it was made, but again, if you can watch it legally, please do. <laughs> if the distribution company can make this film available on YouTube as an official upload with ads, that would be awesome. A lot of other animated films have done that, like the 1980s film Rock and Rule. But for now, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you liked the video and you want to see more, then don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and you show me your wee-wee and I'll show you mine.